Michael. Yes, Jim. You really got to see this movie. What movie? The Goonies. All right. Well, welcome to You Gotta See This Movie. This is a podcast with two guys who love to talk about movies that you gotta see. As well as look at the deeper things that make these stories more than just a movie. I am Michael, and this is... Jim. Jim, and uh, this is our very first episode. And uh, Jim, what is the movie that we got to see? We are going to watch The Goonies. The Goonies. The Goonies. A group of young misfits called The Goonies discover an ancient map and set out on an adventure to find a legendary pirate's long-lost treasure. Man. So it's got treasure, it's got pirates, it's got kids. What more do you want? What more do you want? What more do you want? Yeah. All right. So this is obviously a very stapled movie. It's a beloved movie. Um, what's your history with the movie? What did, when did you see it? What did you think? Pretty sure I saw it in the theater. Mm-hmm. And, and the only r- thing that I really remember is that the credits roll and Cindy Lauper singing yeah. The Goonies Are Good Enough. Yeah. Good enough. And I just thought, why this song? It's just a weird song. It doesn't fit the movie. What? I don't know what's yeah. going on. Had a whole tie in with WWF wrestling, too. No, it did. Yeah, it did. How's that? I don't know. Because if you watch the video, it's got WWF wrestlers along with the Goonies character. The, the music video? Mm hmm. Yeah. That's bizarre. Yeah, the 80s were a wild time. Yeah. I think I missed in the beginning um, when they were watching like on the inside of the house and mm-hmm. the TV on and, and, and the song was on at that time. And maybe I miss it in the beginning. So that's why when the credits rolled at the end and that was the song, I just thought it was a weird song to be Actually, playing. I think there's a whole storyline in that music video of like her parents. Like I can't remember. They own some sort of business, but they're like foreclosing and the bad guy wrestlers come in and they're coming to buy the place out. But what happens is they, they just like the Goonies, they find some back room with the treasure. I'm pretty sure we're not hundred percent, but it's a wild video. So the what they just figure City Lopper's popular, wrestling's yes, popular, yes. it's the eighties. Mm-hmm. And then when they go into the room with the treasure, I think the Goonie kids are in there already. <laughs> so yeah. That's cool. Okay, yeah. So I thought I saw it in the theater. Yeah. Where where did you see it? All right. Well, I got an interesting story behind this. So I did not see it in the theater. <clears throat> um it came out in eighty five, so I uh I was four, so I wasn't really seeing that movie back then. But uh, it was one of those movies that I remember before I ever saw it, I always heard about it. It was like it was a movie that you got to see, right? And so uh, I can remember one year, I can't remember what grade I was in, but I had um, I had a, so growing up, I had like a, a benign tumor in my hip and that, that like kept me out of school for, for a long time. And, uh, and so we had some family friends bring over a bunch of VHSs because what are you going to do when you're laying around? Because I had these hip surgeries. And I can remember getting, there were a bunch of home home video VHSs. So it was like they recorded them. You know what I mean? Oh, I so it wasn't like, it wasn't like this. A bootleg. It was a bunch of bootlegs, right? Okay, yeah. And back then, so you could get one VHS that was way bigger, like it had more film on it. So it had three movies. Oh yeah. So look, listen to this lineup, and they were all three movies I had never seen that I've always wanted to see. So the first one, Back to the Future. Oh nice. Got to watch that. Second one was The Gremlins. Oh dang. And then the third one on that list was The Goonies. So I mean, talk about it like a it's like, like a, a, it's like like a like, lineup right there, right? Yeah, it's a Spielberg <clears throat> Spielberg special. Yeah. So that was my intro into seeing The Goonies. Was at home, sick, injured, and fell in love with it ever since you know so um yeah i'm just trying to think of the the, the tape speeds it's like sp ep and lp yeah <laughs> <laughs> depending on how many in videos you can get mm-hmm. on, a, on a on a i remember that typically you could get like three yeah three movies but ep extended play extended play yes yes well very cool so Let's talk about some of the actors and, well, let's talk about the man who wrote the story, Steven Spielberg. 
Um, he did not direct this movie, but he did write the original story to the to the Goonies. Now he he wrote basically probably like the the idea of it, right? Yeah, because Chris Columbus did the screenplay. He did the screenplay. And I always get that mixed up. If somebody writes a thing, but then somebody has to come in and basically create all the dialogue. So yeah, so basically it's probably Steven Spielberg on a napkin that wrote kids, pirates, buried treasure. Yeah, and so He's go all, make this a movie. Yeah, I did my part. You you go yeah. do all the work and write. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, um, so yeah, Christopher Columbus. Uh, Chris Columbus, not Christopher Columbus, wrote the actual screenplay. Is it Chris it. Columbus or Christopher? It, it's Chris Columbus. No, but doesn't like his like does isn't that like his thing? Like you see on a movie, like it's one of his movies, it's like Columbus. His company. Yeah. Yeah. So what is Christopher it, Columbus? It, it is. It but is. he goes by Chris Columbus. He no. probably doesn't want to get confused because it's not really popular to be Christopher Columbus. I bet days. it. I bet it was Christopher for the longest time. Yeah. And then re- until recent. Until recently. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, talk about a crazy lineup of that, right? You got Spielberg with the story, you got Columbus with the screenplay, and then you've got Richard Donner who directed movies like Lethal Weapon. Um, you know, he make as the actual director. So I mean, that's 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 quite the lineup for a creative standpoint. Now, what else has has Donner directed that's not in the adult? Action Richard thriller. Donner. Oh, as far as yeah. kids go, well, he did Superman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that that's family kid mm-hmm. adventure stuff. Okay. Yeah, Superman. Yeah. He did. Uh, he did the 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 secret Superman two movie that people didn't get to see until years later because they fired him. Really? Uh, yeah, he got fired. Why so they fire? so the original mm-hmm. Superman two that people saw in theaters was not the Richard Donner version, but Richard Donner does have a Superman version out that you can now find on physical media. Really? Yep. Huh. Yeah, have, you, so have you seen it? I have seen it. How it does is it a com- better movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and then he did all the Lethal Weapons. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's Richard Donner. <laughs> he died in 2021. So wow. RIP to Richard Donner. Mm-hmm. There will be no Lethal Weapon 5 from him. But uh, so, yeah, so that's the lineup. So real quick, before we, you know, we want to talk about these kids because for a lot of us other than i think um um uh, short round from indiana jones like we these kids are kind of like they weren't well known at the time but they've all kind of go on gone on to do bigger and better things but uh kind of the main stars of the film or at least the well-known people are the the fratellis right it's yeah. the uh it's uh you got anne ramsey anne ramsey and she's been in a bazillion things and yeah. she's always plays that kind of character right right that that the mean you know, old lady oh, have you seen a movie where she is actually a good guy or a good <laughs> a good person <laughs> no a person that doesn't you know make you scared um but uh i like one of my favorite guys is robert davi that's another guy that plays a bunch of villains in a bunch of movies okay you know he's always like a drug lord or um you know which he who he was the the opera singer brother, you know? Right. Yeah. And then Joey Pantel, Joey Pantalonio, Pantalonio. I Pantalonio. just I always refer to him or I hear people refer to him as Joey Pants. Um, but uh, he's a funny guy. But I think though that, that dynamic with the mom and the two boys was hilarious. Oh yeah. It's great. Yeah. So, but I don't know. Yeah, just it's kind of crazy to think like when I mean, we talked about like this creative lineup they had, and like these kids got to be a part of it, right? You, like you think like they really appreciated, you know, what they were doing, who they were with, while they were making this movie. No, their parents just got on the job. They're you know drove them to set, and you're right. gonna do this. You're gonna be rich and famous, and you're gonna make the family a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's gonna remember this movie forever. So. Yeah, I, I always wondered that, like, you know, and we'll get into some of these scenes later, but I know, like, there's a cool story with the, the pirate ship um, and these kids. But, uh, yeah, so I've always wondered, like, did they appreciate, did they know what they were doing? Or were they just having a good time? Yeah, I don't know, set? because I it, it depends on the kid, because some of them, I'm sure, were like, I want to be an actor, I want to be in movies, and they probably even did a little of their own kid research and figured out who Richard Donner was and, oh, yeah. and probably got excited to meet him. And like Superman, he did Superman. Yeah. 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 
So they probably said, oh yeah, this is the guy that directed Superman. So they probably got a lot of the kids like really excited about, oh, the Superman guy, he's, mm. he's directing this movie. It's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. This movie's going to be a slam dunk. Now was Josh Brolin, is that, is that son of? James Brolin. James Brolin. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, I didn't look it up, but I kind of assumed. So yeah, there. that's his son. Oh, that's cool. So, and I'm not too sure on what other films he has done prior to this. Obviously, he goes on to have a great career. Um, That's cool. So, yeah. Let's talk about some of the scenes that we love. Um, and I, if right from the gate, and again, this is one of those movies that from the beginning, I can remember as a kid, just the silent skull, right? The camera, it was like the, the pirate skull when you go through the eye. Just the silence of that, and there's like Goonies. Like, yeah, that was like super cool. That in. was like super cool, and right. it almost had a, a like a digital 3D quality yeah. to it, even though it, it wasn't. Yeah, I want to think not not when no. this was done now, but it has that kind of an eerie looking, like ooh, like you just like entered into like a spooky cave mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, that right. was cool. And yeah, and again, there's like no music. There's no like adventure music. It's just Goonies. Here we go. And Who's then, I, whose idea was that? Oh, well, I'm going to just say it's probably Spielberg. You think? No, I just give him credit for everything. I, you know what I think probably what happened is like, like the guy doing the titles was just going to be the Goonies. Mm-hmm. And then the title guy is probably like this like young kid. He's like, oh yeah, check this out. And he did it. And they were like, whoa, that's <laughs> cool. He's like, we're doing that. We're, we're doing, doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from right there, it goes into a scene that you probably didn't expect right it goes to a jail scene and it goes to robert davi who is hanging from his jail cell and uh he gets that note which i find is hilarious like i think it says like you idiot do you really think i'm dumb enough to kill myself <laughs> right and yeah then it's all a bruise to escape from this organ jail so you know what was cool like right out of the gate is like like the, just the production design, it it, it kind of catches your attention right away. Cause like the jailhouse was, that was kind of a cool, like they spent mm-hmm. time looking for this jailhouse or it just happened to be in town, but it was just, it was, yeah. it was just really kind of cool looking. And then from there, there's the shot where, you know, they're dumping the gas and it's still like opening credits, op- opening, uh, you know, music going, he, you know, he lights a fire, he shoots it, the fire's lit, and then the windshield, the, the yeah. side window of the glass goes up in front of his face, and he's laughing. He's that, doing a maniacal laugh. A maniacal laugh with yeah. the flames, like, reflected in his face. It's like, it's like, that's like a super cool shot. Yeah. I mean, really, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And you got Ann Ramsey, the crazy mom, like, I'm driving. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, I mean, for me, being a real young, impressionable child seeing this movie, it made busting out of jail seem very possible. Oh yeah. And like very easy. Yeah. You know, so I don't know if it if it doesn't um, you know, speak well of the Oregonian cops because it's a small town. It's a small town. Th- that kind so, of stuff doesn't happen there. Right. And then they have this uh this crazy, you know, chase, but while they're doing the chase, they introduce all the characters. Right? So and you see them in their element almost. You see um you know, chunk. You know, watching it, but eating pizza, playing video games. Uh, you see uh, Data testing out his inventions, all while these cars are just driving by. You see, um, oh man, I'm blanking out on her name. Um, she's she's getting the fish out the, of the yeah, and then on the or the cheerleader, yeah, right. She's practicing cheer, and you kind of see their personalities. You see who they are before you ever see like these cast of characters come together. So, but mouth kind of got like the dud, oh, the dud right. one because he's just he's helping, helping his, his dad, dad fix the sink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I forgot about that one. That's a good one. And then yeah, and then again, like these these people in this these uh, ORV. Um, you know they call them RV. You notice like they called it an RV and it's, it's a wagon. They said ORV. Uh, ORV. ORV. Off road vehicle. Doesn't he say like oh it went in a cool RV? Is pretty he, sure it's ORV. Is he saying ORV? I think so. I don't know. I always thought it was weird because that's not an RV. But an RV is, is like weird. A, it's like a camper. Yeah. Not a not a not a, a Jeep wagon here at the station wagon. It was a Jeep wagon here. And the funny thing is like they enter in that giant race 
in the middle of the day, there's some sort of like giant race going on yeah. on the beach. And that car smokes all these giant trucks. Yeah, right. right. Like, come on. That was that was a Jeep commercial right there. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, look, look what your look what our, our your Jeep can do. Yeah, it's like a V six automatic. Yeah, and it smokes all these. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, so that's a great, great opening scene. What do you think? And yeah, well, uh, I think that's like like how how are they going to get out of this situation? How are they going to escape? It's like oh, you hide in a crowd. Hide in a crowd. Well, how do you hide a, a an RV, an old RV, in a crowd? you know find a race find a race or a crowd of ORVs yeah. that are on the beach and and, and hide yeah. and yeah. again Oregonian cops hey, where they going where to go I don't know yeah alright so from there you get to the house then you meet Mikey and you meet Brad uh, which is you know Josh Brolin's character and then you kind of get to the meat of what's going on and then those characters or the goonies at least start to come together the goonies of the goondocks of the goondocks the goondocks Which, as a kid i didn't never knew what that meant i just thought they were goonies i just thought like that was like their gang name i guess but but they say it in the movie they somewhere. do say it they in the do, movie, and then it's like oh okay yeah. never picked up on it um but and that house is like iconic now yes. it's like it's like a major like Tourist trap. Yeah. Or, yeah. Not tourist a tourist trap because I think the people actually don't like it. <laughs> the people that own the house. Like, just get away from my house. Yeah, there's like it's, all these people. It's just a house. It's just a house. It's just yeah. a house. It's funny. Like, you get these iconic movie houses and you get people that will either embrace that or hate it. Yeah. So as I know, like, the um the Christmas Story house, that's a museum. Yeah. Like, they turn that into a full, uh, full functioning museum. Um, a couple houses from the movie Halloween... I know they've kind of opened up their house for a kind of a museum type thing too. I um, I think I'd, it'd be super cool to have the house. Yeah. And like meet people on occasion. But if it's this constant steady stream mm-hmm. of like, it would get old. Yeah, it would. It would. So like, would you want to live in that house? No, no. Cause I like my privacy. Okay, let's say you had privacy. Oh, then yeah, that was a cool house. Got a cool attic. What do you? Do? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's got like an ocean view, right? It's Doesn't got an ocean, it? ocean view. view. It's got yeah. on a hill. It's a cool old house, cool attic. But let's talk about the coolest thing is that if someone comes knocking at my gate, I don't have to physically walk down the steps and open it because there's some sort of crazy contraption that opens up the gate for you. <laughs> that his parents were perfectly fine letting him set this up. Set with- this up put nails in the house and ropes and, and have a chicken and yeah 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 which but as a kid it's cool as a kid that's super it's cool super cool yeah. yeah um and that's how we entered that's how we meet chunk right and he has to do the trouble shuffle to get in instead of just opening the gate himself yeah and walking up so i thought that was funny it's a kid club thing yeah 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 and data and data which I just he plays the uh, 007 uh, theme song as he's making his entrance. That's the best. <laughs> you know, double O negative. Um, yeah, and he has his own entrance too. Yeah, which is neat. Um, so yeah, so you got the gathering, the gathering of the kids. They're all there, and uh, oh man, it's I find this hilarious. And that's another thing too. Like it's such it's so well written that like every character has like they're not they're not filler characters like they're they're so well written their personalities what they do data mouth chunk mikey um and then when that (laughs) when the mom brings home the housekeeper because she wants the house clean before the house gets demolished right uh you know mouth just i can translate and just instantly is on we're trying to convince her, like, no, this is a drug house. If you mess up, we're gonna lock you <laughs> in the <laughs> closet with the cockroaches. Um, which I find is hilarious. Like he just didn't think about, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. He just did it. Oh yeah, right off the yeah. bat, he's like, I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And then the coolest scene, I, I think, is the second coolest scene scene in the movie. Um. Like whenever the scene comes on, like I, my eyes are glued to the television is the attic scene. Oh yeah. Cause you're, you're looking to see what other, all, all the cool stuff up. That's First up off. There. Yeah. There's, there's tons of cool stuff. There's, 
yeah, the, every kid's dream, right? To just go up there and find costumes and swords and mystery things. Now, Mikey knew it was up there, but his older brother didn't, which I found that kind of odd. You know what? I, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't know dad had all this stuff up here. Come on. Yeah, I picked up on that but this then, time watching too. Like, but he was probably a teenager and probably didn't care. Didn't care. He's yeah. just like, I'm into, I'm into girls. I'm, into I'm girls, lifting weights man, and red bandanas. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's probably it. But Mikey cared. Oh yeah. Because oh yeah, because that was, there was one scene like oh yeah, his dad was the one that told him all these stories. Yeah. So, but yeah, so they 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 find that that's when they find the treasure, and that's when the journey starts to find One Eyed Willie's treasure which is super cool because i think every kid wants an adventure like that to find treasure to find treasure or just to to do something right to well yeah go on an adventure go on and, something that's yeah. bigger than themselves right and they find that so all right well then it goes on to the next cool scene they make it to the restaurant or the summer house. Okay. Um, okay. So okay, we gotta talk about this because he he has the he has the doubloon that lines up the lighthouse to the restaurant to the the rock formation, and mm-hmm. they all line up and in, in this thing. Okay. Okay. So these are 16th century pirates, right? Yeah. Well, that restaurant wasn't. It's, that was probably built, you know, 20th century. Okay, so but it but it fits the little cutout. It does fit the cutout, and I, I think I think I have it figured out. But first off, you're like that makes no sense, right? Yeah. But I'm thinking maybe. Well, okay. Well, where did they get that doubloon? That was in the attic, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe it was at, with the map. So maybe at some point, some, maybe maybe the maybe the the restaurant. It was an entrance to it and somebody in the 20th century or maybe like in the 1800s or 1900s knew that was the entrance to the cave and actually cart and that that was made la- later in other words like one-eyed willie isn't the one that crafted that doubloon that some maybe somebody else did yeah or added it so because it doesn't make any sense that the restaurant would be there right so they were very clear with the fact that someone got out Right. right. So some pirate, someone got that. That's how the map gets out. That's how the doubloon possibly, or yeah, but for sure the map. Okay. Well, that makes or sense. Or even the story. All right. So, so if somebody came out with a yeah. doubloon and maybe those markings were there, he probably added. So, well, no, he wouldn't have added the restaurant. It still wouldn't have been built yet. So there's a whole movie that should be made about this whole one eyed Willie, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So say, let's just say someone gets out. Okay. All right. And is terrified to go back because from what I understand of the story, I think he started going crazy and started killing off his people. Right. Well, yeah. I remember the guy with the, with the, with the sword. Yeah. 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 So he probably freaked out. It's like, I'm never going back there. I don't care. You can, there's no amount of money can convince me to go back to this horrific, probably experience that he had in this cave with crazy one eyed Willie, but he knows a story. He has the map. And yeah, so he probably, you know, starts doing, carving out the doubloon, right? Um, or maybe he made a deal with somebody like, hey, if you go, I will, uh, I'll tell you this and then we'll make a deal. Um, but however, yeah, you're right. That restaurant wasn't built. But one thing I did notice is that in the very corner of the, uh, of the restaurant, there looks to be some like stone thing built that looks like it was broken. So that's the lighthouse. That's the lighthouse. So yeah. the lighthouse has probably always been there and they built uh, a restaurant on the lighthouse. Did the, did so the, the blue so, outline, did it outline the lighthouse? I think it probably, well, it probably it? just outlined the area. And so that, so, oh. so someone just came around and be like, Hey, I know a good idea. I'll build a restaurant by the lighthouse. Okay. And so it just that, that's happened to, to be there. So, okay. Well, I got to see this movie again. You got to see this movie because I got I got to look at that again. Okay. Yeah. So that that's my take on it. But okay. regardless, yeah, that they're they're in that they're in that that restaurant, and uh, but they're not the only ones that are in that restaurant. The Fratellis are there, which 
I have to ask, do you know what they are guilty of? I don't think they ever say. No. Yeah, why are they, I mean, yeah, why was one of them in jail? Yeah, why? They, well, they, they came to bust them out of jail. Yeah. That's obviously their hangout. Oh, but remember, remember, remember they find the uh, counterfeiting. They were counterfeiting stuff in the restaurant, remember? Do you think that's what they were, what they're known for, though? I, I don't know. I, I was starting to wonder. I don't know. Like, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe they're not. Yeah, not I was notori- start- Maybe they're not notorious gangsters. Maybe the the one just, guy, the one guy, just did something stupid in town and got thrown in jail. They're just like shysters or something. Shysters. Yeah. But they also, well, I mean, they do kill that bed. So, oh, oh okay. so there was an FBI okay, so guy the, there. So the, fed, so the so the Fed was probably onto uh, one. Probably yeah. probably discovered so, their pretty I mean, press, and then you could yeah, add murder to their yeah their thing. So they're in the restaurant and yeah, they're the whole like the funny, uh, funny gag of there's a dead body behind them that no one else sees, but, but, uh, but Chunk does see it. And you know, what's funny is that the whole movie Chunk is the voice of reason. Like we shouldn't go do this. These are the bad guys, right? Oh, that was another thing. Like he, he, he is the voice of reason, but he has told so many lies that no one yeah, believes, him, believes right? Him. Yeah, yeah, because like Michael Jackson came to his house, he used a restroom, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but he is the voice of reason throughout the whole movie. Don't do this. Don't go in there. Um, oh yeah, and he calls the police and says that there's creatures attacking the town. If you throw water on him, <laughs> yeah, they multiply. Right. Which Richard Donner, Grimms. Richard Donner, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, which is hilarious. But yeah, even the police don't believe him. Again, it's another uh it's another knockdown on the Oregonian cops. <laughs> not taking <laughs> not listening to a kid. But um yeah, so they're they're in that restaurant, they make it into the restaurant, they're drinking the brown water, which is always very disturbing. She did that on purpose to mess with them. I'm sure they have clean water in there. But where did she get the brown water? How does she make that brown? What is it? Well, there, there's a the water cooler, right? That's the water they drink. There's probably just some old plumbing. She just gets it from, it's tap. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. It's, it's Astoria tap. It's gross. She goes, it's wet, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's water. Um, And then not only that, but w- there's something lurking in the basement. And that's when we first get to see Sloth, right? Their the other brother. Brother who we're assuming was dropped as a kid because he doesn't like the song later on in the movie, Rockabye Baby up from the treetop. Yeah. He gets PSD and starts freaking out. Um, but uh, Yeah, I never really thought about it, but like Sloth, why? They just needed a monster in the movie? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've always liked it. It works. It works. But yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, is that something that they always had in mind? We're going to have this deformed, monstrous, kind of Frankenstein-y kind of guy? Yeah. Very strong guy. Yeah. Yeah. Sloth. Sloth. So he gets in, but eventually, oh, the other thing I love is, is uh, you know, again, it, the uh, um, chunk he has that moment of, I'm done. I want to go home. You don't understand. Like, we're going to be in trouble. It's getting dark. There's dinner. And he's complaining. All of a sudden he goes, but I smell ice cream. <laughs> I smell ice cream. And he opens it up, opens up the freezer and the classic gag of everyone else sees what's going on. Chunk is like, there's Rocky Road. There's vanilla. There's chocolate. And what is it? It's the dead FBI agent he slowly <laughs> turns, slowly starts to turns. fall out. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a dummy or a real guy? I always look to see if I can see his eyes blink or he moves. It's got to be, it's, yeah. a, it's a real guy. It's right? got to be a real guy. A real it, looked, guy. it looked too real. It looked really good. Yeah. yeah really good makeup, dead yeah. makeup, but, uh, yeah. It's um, good acting. Yeah. That's the only scene he played in the movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you see him in the far distance walking into the restaurant, but, that's it. 
Well, you, you did win in the beginning. Yeah, you see like you see him, and then they hear oh, the yeah, gunshots. Oh yeah, they hear the gunshots. Yeah. yeah, and then they're like, "What is that?" They're like, oh, it's probably just a pot and a pan falling." Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, see, it was a fresh. And kill. again, Chunk was over. Like, nope, that was gunshots. That was. Yeah. We need to get out of here. Um, but because of his love for ice cream so much, the Fratellis come back, and he gets locked up into the freezer with them, and the rest of the Goonies they find a hole. To continue on their journey. We got to get to the lowest point in the restaurant. Lowest, lowest point, point in the point. restaurant. And they leave Chunk behind. And they find it by knocking over the water bottle. And they, they hear the water running. Yes. Right? And the they, good water. The good water. Yeah. In the fireplace. In the fireplace. And they find... <laughs> they find... Uh, yeah, they find the hole. And they go in. And they start well, the wait. journey. But without Chunk. Okay, so... So the fireplace was built, obviously with that in mind. Whoever built that knew that that was an entrance. See, there's 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 a whole lore going yeah. on here. The whole thing about, like, I bet like the restaurant owner that built it probably knew about it, and he put the restaurant. Oh, maybe he built the restaurant over the entrance. So he kind of claimed the yeah, area. Yeah, right. Because maybe he was a person that was like, someday I'll go do this when I got all my like gear because everybody in town knew about the legend Mm -hmm. right so i bet he i bet he found the entrance that's it he bought the property the property he built a restaurant so like so if he like actually Mm -hmm. started like digging and bringing stuff out he could bring it out nobody could see maybe nobody could see him he was too scared you know like to maybe go through it was chester copper pot's restaurant oh shoot yeah so chester copper pot was the only other man that went looking for this, but then disappeared. No right. one ever saw him again. And that's why the restaurant closed. And that's why the restaurant closed. Oh man, it's all coming full circle. Yeah. You think somebody's already figured this out? They probably have, right? They it's got probably the whole, on like a Goonies podcast or something. Goonies podcast. There's like a whole. <laughs> there's a fan fan made yeah. film of, of Chester Copper, Copper Pot, and he's like in the restaurant, yeah, making flapjacks and stuff, and. Like one of these days, I'm gonna go down there and get that treasure. He glances at the fireplace and he looks, and mm-hmm. then and then what are you looking at? Oh, nothing, 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 nothing at all. Just oh. Chester being crazy. Oh, get the hole. <laughs> Good old Chester. Um, yeah, so. Copper Pot Restaurant. Oh my gosh! See, I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, you own the restaurant. Yeah. Um. So I always, I always thought it was sad that like Chunk doesn't continue on with the group, which I never understood why they couldn't just open up the the fireplace and send him down with like to say, hey, come with us. But they say, go get the cops, right? They say, go get the cops. But the, none of them were concerned about getting the cops prior to that. They all wanted to continue on in the adventure, right? And all of a sudden they're like, no, Chunk, you go get the cops. Yeah, that yeah. is kind of weird. But although, although I've seen it, seeing it as many times as I've seen it, mm-hmm. I didn't think about that. Yeah, he just ah, I ruined that for you. Yeah, that's okay. I don't be that guy. Well, no, I got to go back and watch. There's so many things now: the lighthouse, the restaurant, cover yeah. pot. Yeah, yeah. But what's interesting about that is, well, what I've always felt because I, again, as a kid, I watched this movie, and as a kid growing up and watching and hearing stories about like the movie industry and how my grandpa would make movies, and again, just being fascinated with behind the scenes aspect of movies. Um, I've always thought how sad it was for chunk to like be away from the rest of the actors. Like now all these actors are going to be in like these different sets and doing these cool things. Oh dang, he wasn't... And then he's like, yeah, you're going to be still in this area with sloth or do this. Did he go down the water slide? He did not go down the water slide. Oh, that's, now, oh, that's not good. I wonder, I mean, I'm sure they let the actor like, all right, yeah. go down, have fun. But, um, but he wasn't. It could have been one of those situations. No, you're not scheduled. He probably yeah. didn't work, he probably didn't work that day. Yeah, and, and then he hears all the stories of like, oh, and then the waterfall. He's like, wait, what, what waterfall? waterfall? What water slide? What are you talking about? They try to make him feel better by yeah. saying, yeah, but you got to eat all that ice cream. Yeah, on, yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. We didn't get to eat ice cream. You got the ice cream scene. Yeah, yeah. So I always felt like that sucks. Yeah, that poor guy, poor kid. Um. And uh, so he stays behind. He gets caught by the Fratellis. 
And he has that scene where they're threatening. They know something's up. Where are your friends? You tell us everything. He's like, everything. Everything. Tell us everything. Goes, okay. Start at the very beginning. (laughs) And I love how like they, those people, like they entertain that. They didn't like stop them right away. Like, no, moron. Tell us where your friends are now. Everything. They like, well, no, let's, let's hear this kid. Let's hear the story. Yeah. (laughs) And a story after story after story. Um, until the mom finally had enough of it. Yeah. I was like, that's it. What was the last one? It was, it was the fake bomb. But it was a fake bomb in the movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> I had a friend in junior high that did that. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Fake vomit. Well, actually he, he, it was, uh, there was like a balcony in our junior high. There was like a two level sort of thing mm-hmm. outside and he bought two Chico sticks, you know, the Chico oh, sticks. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Shoot them up in his mouth. Oh, but didn't swallow. Uh-huh. And his mouth was full of Chico stick, right? So I stood off to the side making vomit sounds, you know. Uh, uh, and like everybody was like looking up at him and then he just let it go. Oh, no. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, it was gross. Yeah, that would get me. I think I, yeah. I, think I would, I would yeah. throw up. Yeah. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, two Chico sticks. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's, that, that's a great, great scene. But yeah, so poor Chunk. Yeah. So another scene that we we talked about that we liked is um they kind of move on, you know, they're going through caves or there, there's a crazy pipe scene where all of a sudden the pipes are all connected to the city. Okay, I want right? to say at this point though how cool all the shots were. Oh yeah. Like like I said like backing up like like the the jailhouse. Mm-hmm. You know, all the interior shots, you know, the how the street, you know, the the camera shot where they're riding their bikes. You know, yeah. down the road, you know, and all the ca- the cinematography was just amazing. Yeah, all the shots were just, yeah, so cool, so cool. Anyway, sorry, I just. But yeah, no, I mean, every corner and every little crevice of them going through this cave, and I loved how it wasn't like just like your standard sitcom cave where everything looks the same. Yeah, like in real life, you would be in different areas, and things would look different. Yeah, and it's, so, it's not like like a lot of TV caves or movie caves. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a flat ground and, and there's the walls right. and they're just walking through. No, they're actually climbing up and over things. Yeah, and the lighting's great. And of course, it would be dark, but mm-hmm. you know, it's this movie, so but everything. Yeah, yeah. And so they find what I've always found to be interesting. Like, what does the bottom of a well look like? And they find that, and there's shimmering gold or copper everywhere, right? Yeah, like all the the coins that people have tossed down this well. And then you think it wouldn't look like that, but this is really cool. But it's cool. So it's, right? it, it does look like it that. It does this look like cool. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then the water's like steaming. So it looks like it's like hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody's like, nobody's like, Oh, it's cold water. Right. They're not, they're not like uncomfortable with the mm-hmm. fact that they're getting wet. It's almost like, it felt like one of those, like, like a warm summer evening where it's just, yeah, you know, the good times. Yeah. Good times where you're just, you're comfortable and yeah. And, uh, they realize that obviously this isn't the treasure. Cause I think like right when they first see it, they think this is it. We found the treasure yeah. and they quickly realize, Oh no, that's just, just pennies, pennies and, and, pennies and dimes and, and nickels and, and quarters. Yeah. And, uh, and John F. Kennedy, the John Kennedy, that looks like Martin Sheen. <laughs> you're right. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. They say that. Um, and this is their chance to give up. This is their chance to leave because uh, one of their classmates, Troy, which is one of the villains of the movie, right? The, um, the jerk who threw Josh Brolin brand yeah. off the side of the road, which I always wondered, why didn't he just pull his arm away? You know, he had, just, no, no, he was holding his arm down. Troy was had his head. I know, arm but pinched. come on, you could just, yeah, you could get your arm off. Yeah. Right. Anyways, but, um, He's up there and he's like going to rescue everyone and take them up the bucket, but they don't because I think one of the best speeches in movie history, one of them is given by Mikey. It's a, it's the greatest. It's a great speech. Yeah. And he talks about how, like, I love how he says, like, think about, you know, if we don't find this treasure now, we're not going to save our houses. We're not going to say, he says on the lines of, Think about the next time you go outside, it's going to be a different sky. Think about the next time you take a test, it's going to be a different school. Like, man, he really like paints the picture and he really tugs on their heartstrings. Like, this is it. If we don't 
continue on. And it's not, yeah, it's not that they're just losing their houses. These guys are, they're splitting. They're These guys splitting. are all moving to different yeah. cities. Data's going to move to Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Their friendship's gone. Their mm -hmm. house, I mean, everything's gone. Everything's gone. So yeah. this is a last ditch effort to, to save that. And he really tugs at all the, despite the danger, despite everything, he really tugs at their heartstrings to keep going forward. It's our time down It's here. our time. It was their time up there. It's our time. Yeah. How often do you use that line in like <laughs> casual conversation? Whenever someone says like, yeah, brings up time or time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's our time. It's our time. Yeah. It's our time here. It's our time. Down yeah. Here. Good scene. Great scene. Good speech. And, uh, one of the best, one of the best, uh, booby traps that he has. Like, I think the first booby trap was the stones and where they find the poor deceased Chester copper pot, right? The restaurant owner, mm -hmm. the restaurant owner, yeah. which we've now decided yeah. the restaurant owner, um, is, uh, he's only, he made it that far. Right. Right. And, and that will, oh, that was the thing in Mikey's speech. Like, look, we've already made it past the professional, which they think is a professional, but yeah. And again, they're just kids and they're just kids. Like yeah. we've already made it this far. We've, gone further than anyone else has ever gone we can keep going um so they get past that but then which i always thought was the coolest looking set piece was this horrific organ right this piano organ um that they have to play to move forward but wasn't um, there a booby trap there was there was the the, the stones that fell on the him. stones that fell that's what got copper pot what was the next scene was that the plumbing scene no that was the first thing they come across oh we skipped a plumbing scene yeah uh -huh. the first thing they come across was the plumbing scene but that wasn't a booby that wasn't trap. a booby trap that was just funny plumbing. um then then, then they find they copper, find copper, copper pot. pot then they find the well then there's the bat scene which was bats a, just kind of fly out which again wasn't a, was there something that released the bats no well the rock they oh, right, right, right. And, um, okay. So then they get to the org. No, pictures of pictures of peril. Well, yeah. They have the, oh, that's right. Yeah. No wait, well, The pictures of peril was the organ scene. Cause he falls. No, that's no, that right. was, no, no, that, no, that was before. That was before you're right. That was a pre, yeah. Before. Yeah. yeah. Which that's and, nasty which though. You go that, down that thing and those spikes at the bottom. Holy moly. That's, like it's, it's a fun kid movie but can you imagine if he that's didn't like, have the pinches like if it was mouth that fell man and then <laughs> mouth just gets impaled and like well adventure over guys <laughs> yeah we, that's like nasty. We, now we're done that's we're, not we're like falling to the bottom of the pit and like splatting yeah. that's like oh man yeah but uh yeah but his, has the, the the pinches but his uh plastic chattering teeth and a stretched out slinky were able to stop his <laughs> fall <laughs> and bounce him and bounce him yeah, yeah. so I forgot about that 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 one. It was my pictures of peril. But then after that is the organ scene. Yeah. Which they have to play the the bones of who knows who where those bones came from. But uh, I mean, one assuming of, yeah. people. Well, one of Willie's shipmates, right? I mean, one of his crew. There's a lot of shipmates. You're gonna be the organ. You're gonna be the organ, and right? And extra bones, and you're gonna be the fingers. It's probably crazy Willie talk they thought for yeah. a couple weeks, but then they realize, oh no, he's serious. He's gonna. He's going to make an organ out of us. That's right. So, um, I'm going to make an organ out of your organs. <laughs> right. You know what that means? <laughs> um, yeah. So they have that cool scene, which again, I go back to why this movie is so brilliant and why this movie is so good. Because I feel like no character is wasted. Everyone has their moment. Everyone has their part. And, and man, I keep, uh, blinking out on her name andy 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 yeah. in the movie she's the piano player she's the piano player she, she has play piano. she has her moment to uh to save everybody what was her to, friend's name um the the girl in the glasses yeah that is steph yes steph steph okay um which they don't really i think they might only say that one time in the movie okay but um anyways uh so Sorry, yeah she I, has she yeah. has her moment she like, has her know, moment again and she's nervous and she's scared and i love how like mikey is there to really like calm her down and says hey look okay goonies are never perfect just don't mess up again don't mess up again yeah. <laughs> you know because because now we're going to die yeah. and uh, they don't she does it and they get through and they get to their next step goonies never say die goonies never say die 
Yeah. Um, and then again, as a kid, the water slide scene, you know, just like, how cool is that? Like, even though they're running for their lives and they don't know what's the end of this water slide. If I was one of those goony kids, it'd be like, Oh, I don't care. If nothing's chasing me. I'm going down that going water, down the slide. water slide. Yeah. Yeah. So, which kind of doesn't make sense, but it's super cool. But it's super cool. And I'm like watching it to see if they're like smiling and laughing, but no, they, you yeah, know, they're terrified. They're terrified. Yeah. That was probably several takes in the first few times they were probably like, yeah, you know, Woo-hoo! you gotta, you gotta look terrified. Stop smiling. Yeah. I know you're having like, fun, kid. Stop smiling. Yeah. And it was clean water. It wasn't like it was dirty water. Yeah. Those were some clean yes, water slides. Yes. Yeah. All right. And then at the very last, we're in, we're in, we're in act three. They come out of the water slide and what do they see? They finally made it. One eyed Willie's ship, the pirate ship, the pirate ship. So do you know the story behind the ship scene? Like the behind the scenes? Story? Yeah. Yeah. About them they, not knowing. Yeah. They didn't yeah. know. They didn't know it was going to be there. Yes. And they turn around and didn't even have to act because, well, boom, it was they there. They did. So actually we don't get their, their reaction because I guess what, what really happened is that they, that was their goal. They wanted to get their first reaction on camera, uh-huh. but they turned around and these kids started saying like all these cuss words. <laughs> and so they said, oh, yeah, they left that out of the behind yeah, the scenes like, video. Oh, sh-. And so they had to redo it. So, uh-huh. so you do see, so maybe part of it's their first reaction, but, but they, wasn't their first they reaction. had to do that whole scene again, um, which I think is hilarious, right? That's pretty good. And the cool thing about that is, I know you got your, your magazine, that that it was a real pirate ship. That's nuts. That they it's actually nuts. built. They, I mean, man, they don't do that anymore, right? You've got they build they they build parts of a pirate ship and then green screen the rest. But yeah. here we are back in the eighties, and they're like, well, no, we're gonna build a real pirate ship. So I wonder whether this is probably was this at Warner Brothers? So they probably have a stage with it with a water tank. Oh yeah, for the pool, sure and then all... they and they built. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, such a cool yeah. set. And again, as a kid, and see the funny thing is, Spielberg knew that the kids were going to geek out over it because that's why it was his his it was his idea to get their original uh, reactions, and so he knew like these kids would just be immersed in it. Yeah, and I, and I love that about that. Like just. They could have made it simple. They could have just done parts and shot from angles or, but no, they're, but they got a lot of great shots off mm-hmm. on it though. I mean, they have all the, the all the upper deck action, yeah. walking the plank, splashing around in the water. Yeah. I mean, they really, they really went all yeah. out on that set. And again, just being a thing about being a kid and acting in this movie, like it's, that's once in a lifetime. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like they're crazy. It's not like putting on a green screen suit with ball tracking balls on it. And, mm-hmm. All right, be scared. There's a monster chasing you. It's like, yeah. no, that's like super cool. So they, they get on the boat, they find the treasure. They eventually find Willie. And, and one scene that, uh, or one part when they're on the boat that i never picked up before until seen at this time. This is why it's important to watch movies that you love over and over and over because there is always something that you can learn from. Or not learn from, but or there's always something you can see differently. And I don't know why. I've never seen or paid attention to the scene where Data falls. He's in the boat and he falls and he finds the camera and he just, like, he finally hit his limit. And he's, like, just complaining and just, he's like, I'm tired of Data falling. I'm tired of skeletons. I'm tired of this. And, and he goes, oh, use the stairs, they say. Like, he's just going off on, on them. But but the one thing I never picked up on, on is that he starts getting personal and he starts talking about his life. He goes, and then they're always saying like, Data, your inventions are bad. And like, he has this like retrospective moment of like, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired of everything going wrong. I'm tired of this. <laughs> and like, meanwhile, the kids are just in the background passing him by, like not listening to him and going and, and getting the treasure. So Data's having a moment. He's at, just give Data his, his moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Yes, I, I laughed out pretty loud. <laughs> I was because I never noticed that that part before. Well, what's cool about going going back and watching these movies is that our TVs are bigger now. 
Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And so there, there's a lot of movies that I watch now and go, wow, what a great scene. I never noticed that before. Right. You know, because you, you can just see it now. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. like in the theater, when you see it, you can, you can catch all those details, but we only saw it once, maybe twice, but once, and then that's it. You're, yeah. not, you're not going back several times over and over again, watching the same movie over and picking out things, but you can now, which yeah. is cool. This is really cool. And pausing it. And pausing it. Without burning out the VHS, <laughs> the, the tape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they have their their final stand with the Fratellis. Fratellis, they go down the water slide. I'm sure they had a blast. You don't see that, but somehow they got down there and they catch up to Mama, Mama Fratelli. Mama down? Fratelli. Did, did she go down? down did, they, did they show her coming out or, or stunt mama coming out? <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Like, yeah. ah. um, but uh, they catch up to him and they pretty much steal everything. And they're like, they're kicking him out. They're going to make him walk the plank and just basically go home. Basically, that's what they're saying. Kids, just go home. We're going to keep this treasure. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but then super, super sloth comes in chunk with sloth. Yeah. Finally comes and saves the day. So great scene. And, uh, basically, uh, wraps it up there. The kids are defeated. They don't walk away with the treasure, but they're walking away with their lives. And, uh, uh mama Fratelli grabs the wrong coin, st- makes a booby trap which then causes a giant earthquake and everyone has to flee the cave. And they're just kind of walking on the beach and the mighty Orgonian cops just happen to be on the beach when the Goonies are walking out. Hey, I wonder if these kids are out here on the beach. We don't know where they're at. (laughs) Well, it's them goobers. Oh, there's those goobers out there. Which I think one of those cops was Richard Donner. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I read that somewhere that he plays one of the cops. Oh. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Well, that's one of my trivia questions. Oh, shoot. Well, there we go. But you haven't answered it yet. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get there. Okay. Um, yeah. So the movie wraps up there. Bertelli's come in. They're sad they missed all the gold, but Mikey has one pouch of jewels, just enough. We assume just enough to pay to pay the uh, to pay the mortgage on the mortgage. house or the, or the which yeah. is it just his house or is it like everyone's house? I've always wondered that. What's 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 uh what's he signing? What's Mikey's dad signing off? Is it everyone's life? Yeah, or just I, I don't his know. House? It's the, the agreement to to sell the property and yeah, maybe um, maybe Mikey was the last the holdout the holdout. Yeah, house. it could be. Yeah, because Data was already getting ready to move to mm-hmm. Detroit. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's not just like an overnight, oh, we got to move to Detroit now. There's, there's probably months of planning. So, so no matter what happened to the Goonies after this movie, Data's gone. They, they probably <laughs> made the move already, right? Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you got you wrap up at the end and there's a news van out there, I guess, because they're just looking for missing kids. And the news van asks them, Hey, tell us about your adventure. What happened? And a little slip up in lines reveals something that has been, I don't know, guessed upon, wondered about for history, unless people didn't pick up on it. But what was that? You know what that was? The octopus. The octopus. Okay, so this so this goes back to what you were saying that every character in the in the movie had a purpose. Mm-hmm. So Mikey was the leader. Chunk was kind of the, he's, he was the, the reasonable one that wanted to go get help. Mm-hmm. So he was that, right? Uh, Andy played the piano. Data was the gadget guy. Okay, mm-hmm. so what did Steph do? She was the fish person, right? Mm-hmm. She was probably slated to fight the octopus. Fight the octopus. And I think I remember seeing a picture of her in a scene where she's fighting the octopus. Yeah. Yeah, because in the very beginning, she's she's taking the crabs out of a barrel. Right. So she's the fish person. She's the yes. fish fighter. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And yeah, and her and her so, whole her whole mission or purpose in this thing was to fight the octopus. Mm-hmm. So they say this line: "Oh, we had to fight an octopus. Uh-huh. It was scary." And like even the news kind of goes, "Octopus." You why know? didn't they cut it? I don't, don't know why they didn't cut that, but but, but obviously they just, they just there's him? no octopus scene, right? Yeah, they did film one. 
I have seen it because when the invention of DVDs came out, they finally released that scene. But and for Steph's, years, and Steph's fighting him, right? I cannot remember. I've seen it I one think. time, yeah. and I can understand why they took that scene out because the octopus looked horrible, looked really dumb. So you got a movie with almost perfect sets, perfect everything, and then it was like they probably contracted the octopus out to somebody else because everyone's too busy building the ship, and it was some like aha, uh-huh, see right here. Yeah. See, she's fighting the octopus. Oh, yeah, there she is. There she is. That was her yeah, whole was reason her to be in it rolled is to fight the yeah. fish. And she huh. I just look I didn't I don't remember seeing the behind the scenes, but it looked pretty dumb. It looked pretty dumb. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. crazy though. She can't fight that thing. Look at me. Look how big those tentacles yeah, are. Yeah, no, I mean, would die you from that thing. Her. Yeah. That's one thing to get away from the fratellis, but it's another thing to get away from an animal. There's no way. That's probably no why they way. cut the scene. Yeah. Yeah, and it looked dumb. It did. So, yeah, so that was it. That's the Goonies. It ends there. They get the jewels. The Fratellis get arrested. Um, somehow, Chunk, in the matter of seconds, convinces his parents that, hey, the sloth guy's got to live with us now. Like, there's no second guessing it from the parents. Like, hey, maybe this isn't a good idea. Yeah. Maybe we need to, like, he could be dangerous. He could be dangerous. They're the just guy. like, all right. He lives with us now, and that's a whole nother movie, like Sloth or Chunk in High School with the Adventures of Sloth. Yeah, you know, but um, that's how it ends. Goonies forever. That's that. All right, Jim, is there any uh, movie magic with this movie magic? Well, this movie was loaded, loaded. with vi- visual effects, and this mm-hmm. was like the heyday of visual effects, and we all know, well, the the movie visual effects masters of the time was industrial light and magic mm-hmm. ILM. And so they handled pretty much all the visual effects in this movie. And the only thing that, uh, well, one of the things that I noted, which was super cool was the pirate ship mm. was a miniature. Um, and actually one of these books here, we might have to show the picture, but they crafted this model of the pirate ship and it uh, was about five feet long and uh, fully detailed. And I'm trying to find this picture here, which is super cool. Which is interesting because it was used at the last the last scene in the film. Okay, here it is. Yeah. So check this out. This is cool. So this is like this is like model maker uh, moments here. Cla- classic model maker. Check out the deck of the ship. Oh, oh wow, that's cool. No, take a closer look right there. What's that? Oh, it's R2. Yeah, a little R2-D2 oh, on deck. Oh, my gosh. Of course they did. Isn't that great? Yeah. So, I mean, they fully detailed this thing out. Yeah. You know, uh, all the sails are rigging, all the deck details and everything, but you really only see it at the, at the very end. So this is the ship that is that escaped after the booby trap. That's the ship go. Yeah. So there's three shots. There's one shot where it's, where it's peering from the, 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 the cave, mm-hmm. still in the distance, sort of. And then as it's sort of out in the water, heading out, to where it's going to sink because we we figured that that uh, one eyed Willie set the, the set the booby trap to sink it to so sink nobody it. gets his treasure right yeah but uh, cool model classic you know model making blue screen shot um, set the set the ship up on a gimbal shoot it against blue screen get it like moving and uh, and on a shot like this what they would do is they would you know they'd have fans blowing on the sails to get the sails moving but they would mm-hmm. shoot it at high speed play it back and slow-mo so that the it gives it a little more scale oh, yeah. when, when the wind's moving the, the the sails and oh that's cool um but yeah a little bit of movie magic there. so you got a little r2 on there yeah so, so anyway, that's the scene that always cracks me up because it's when that officer looks up he goes holy mary mother of god who says that <laughs> orgonian cops Holy you know, Mary if there's Monday. any Argonian cops listening to this, I apologize. But the Goonies did you no favors, no favors whatsoever. Um, but I'm sure you guys are amazing. And then we all want to know what happened. And there it goes. There it goes. Up, but I think up. you're right. I think it goes to sink. It has to. Yeah. It goes to sink. One-eyed Willie's final escape. I'm mm-hmm. gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the. Uh, I'm gonna take my treasure to Davy Jones' locker. <laughs> All right. Well, one of the things we love to talk about these movies, but again, sometimes some of these movies are more than just stories. And the bigger theme that I kind of got out of this 
is um, the idea of not giving up. And um, despite horrible setbacks, um, you know, I, I look at it as like kind of our walk with God that we have um, and watching, watching the Goonies go through their adventure. <clears throat> first off, they had to act on this adventure, right? So they had to choose to move forward. It wasn't like just going to happen to them. Um, you know, they found the map, they found like the pieces, but they still had to move forward. And, and so to save their house and, and I love that. And that you got to think about how in the Christian, in the Christian walk and, in, in how despite what people may think, it's not easy. It's not an easy life. You're not promised anything special other than eternal life. But this side of heaven, you're not promised anything special. Um, but you can act in faith moving forward. Faith is an action. And I love that about the Goonies. I love the how it really portrayed that well. Um even to the point of there were many moments where they could have given up, right? Or they should have given up. They had moments of, um, okay, this is getting too dangerous. Let's take the easy way out. Oh, we found all this fake money. This will be a way to fix our problem. Oh, we found all this well money. That's an easy way. We could just take care of it this way. But they didn't. They kept moving, staying the course of what they felt was right. Uh, what do you think? I think it, it's interesting, you know, when you look at it that way and the story that this tells, um, it, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like God set in motion a beginning and an end and a, mm. pa- and a path for us to follow. And it's like, I can see, you know, you know, if, if God saw the Goonies, he would say, I'm sure he, he did. He probably did. Right. Well, he's seen it. Right. And he's probably, he's probably sitting there and say, you know, it's, it's my time up here. But it's your time. Your time down Ooh, there. Oh, that's it's, good. It's your time down there. That's good. And and we make the decision whether we're, you know what path we're going to take. Yeah. And and I think he probably del- he delights in our decisions. Mm-hmm. He delights like seeing us doing things. Like, oh, you're going to go down that cave, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh you're going to go this way, huh? Mm-hmm. There's an octopus there. You're going to survive the <laughs> octopus, but, but you're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. And that's you know that's and that's life. You know. Yeah. You know. I think a lot of times you know. Uh, somebody following the Christian faith or, or, you know, maybe like newly converts or whatever, mm-hmm. they'll think that, you know, God's got their back. I mean, he does have their back ultimately mm-hmm. in the end, but man, you can go through some really tough times. Yeah. I mean, even too, like, you know, for a lot of people, they find faith in God and it's fun and it's exciting and it's new. This adventure, they ha- they all had that. Even when there was like gunfire and like, there's all these like things, external things for the most of them, they were so just geeked out about going on this adventure until they started running and finding Chester Copperpot or finding more dead bodies. And they're like, okay, maybe we shouldn't do this. But, but Mikey had faith. But Mikey had faith. Mikey had faith and he kept yes, going. Yes, we need to keep going. We need to save our, our you know, we need to make it to the end. And I, I one of the things too is that that you, you, you have to fight. Like in a sense you have to fight for your faith right no that, you, you do and 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 it's it's not easy because it is it is a struggle it mm-hmm. is a fight it is something and even even when times are going good you can get off track because you're not staying you, you start to wander you know yeah, what i mean you're fighting every every moment so yeah. a, you got to pay attention mm-hmm. yeah you're 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 fighting i mean within yourself with your own sin nature and and I even like how at the end, even when they found the gold, they found the treasure, they still had to fight for it. It wasn't like a for sure thing. And um, they fought up until the very end. And even though they didn't get the gold and you know the grandeur of the major treasure, they got what they needed, right? They, no, that's good too. Maybe they, they didn't got, get everything they wanted, but they got what they but needed. But they got what they needed yeah. to, to, to save. So... Um, Cause and they're not getting the rest because the ship's going down. Right. And that's the thing with God. Like you're going to, God's, 
you know, with, if it's in his will, you're going to get what you need, not necessarily what you always want. Now, do I think in the rare occasions God's going to delight in some cool things for you? Yes. I oh, do. yeah. Yeah. I do think so. But, um, but everything is going to be for the benefit of you as a person, as you as a Christian and for, you know, his, his will. So, but I, I like what you just said, like what you said about like, it's, it's his time and it's your time. What are you going to do with it? You know, so that, 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 that's good. Yeah. I totally believe that, that, that God gives us, he ha he has a story beginning to end mm -hmm. and it's, and it's not like, He's directing every move that you make. You, yeah. you have choices. You have your free will. You have your free will. Yeah. You know, he know, he, you know, he knew that these guys are going to come out on the other end and get the jewels, but yeah, I wonder if they're going to follow the booby trap. <laughs> yeah. You probably will. You're probably going to freak out when you don't get the right key on the organ. That's right. Yeah. But just keep moving forward. Yeah. You'll, you'll play it right. Just don't make another mistake. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Good stuff. All right. Well, because this is our first episode, let me tell you one thing. One thing that we, me and Jim, like to do is to quiz each other on movies. Uh, we like to see which one of us knows more about movies or at least stump us for the day. Um, and so we're going to right now go into competition time. And we're going to quiz each other on the movie that we just got done watching that we love. And that we recommend to people watching it. So, uh, Jim, do you want to go first with the first question? I'm going to go first with the first question because it's it kind of already got brought up. And at this point, you probably already know the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway. I like to feel really arrogant about movies, and I like to think that I know everything. Okay. So go for All it. Right. Okay. So Richard Donner did have a cameo in the film. Mm -hmm. What was his cameo? Where did he appear? What character did he play? pretty sure he was the cop on the on the atv that says oh it's them goobers yep okay yep yeah all right point for michael yeah all right now now interesting enough i watched the movie this is the, the very first time i noticed it but when they pulled up on the atvs maybe it's the bigger screen i don't know but i said that guy looks like richard donner <laughs> and i'm like it's gotta be it's gotta and be and i looked at yeah. it yeah sure enough that was him great all right all right my question okay what is Chunk's real name? They say it in the movie. Oh, Chunk. Mm-hmm. It's not Chunk. Oh, oh, oh. Ticking going on. No, because I know that I've heard one of them. I'll give you a hint. Well, I won't give you a hint, but it's one of the cops when he's talking on the cop. Lawrence. The cop. I Lawrence. should have said nothing. See, if you didn't say cop. Ding, dang it. Because as soon as he said cop, I'm all, he's on the phone, the cop Lawrence. Ah, uh, yes, it's Lawrence. I got okay, it. fine, go. What's the next one? Woo, okay. In the Walsh's house, oh, shoot, they have super cool stuff in their attic. I mean, okay. pirate stuff and mm -hmm. little plasma things and the everything, plasma which thing. I thought was weird. Why Because it's have on. <laughs> That was just a cool thing to right, have. Yeah, there was really yeah. no reason to have plasma things anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so Chunk was saying, wow, Mikey, this is the coolest. The only thing we have in our attic is. Hanukkah decorations. Oh, dang. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. All that right. just probably too easy. One to two. Here okay. we go. Okay. All right. Now, I've known this answer pretty much the whole time I've watched this movie. So this isn't something I just looked up. Okay. I've known this. What was the pirate film that Sloth and Chunk watch while they're in the dungeon? Oh. It's an old Errol Flynn movie, yeah, right? Yeah, it is Errol Flynn. I'm trying to think of titles of Errol Flynn movies because I really don't know what movie it is. I've seen two Errol Flynn. Three Errol Flynn movies. Doesn't he play like Robin Hood? That's one of them. But that wasn't the movie. That wasn't though. this movie. No, no. It's a pirate movie. Mm -hmm. um, the Pirates of Old. Ah, I, I don't know. Captain Blood. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. Captain Blood. Mm -hmm. I, I can remember know. watching this movie with my grandparents when I was yeah. a kid. And then my grandpa telling me that's Captain Blood. And we went out and rented it and we watched Captain Blood. Oh, did the, in the in that do they do the scene where he like sticks the knife in mm -hmm. the sail and that's yeah, how Captain it, Blood does and that. And it like it slows, it's enough yeah. to slow him down. Which I would never do on myself. So 
There's no way that would slow no, you down. No. You're, you're, it would have to be like a ruler. Really Especially how big Sloth is with Chunk on his back. Yeah. Come on, you're falling to your death. If the knife was, was dull, like yeah. really dull. Yeah. But they're not back then because they didn't have anything else to do but sharpen no. their knives, right? So it's probably really sharp. Yeah, and those sails have been sitting there for hundreds of years. I'm sure they're brittle. He would have hit the deck no, like hard. <laughs> they all would have paused and just watched. Like, oh, how horrific. Anyways. Yeah. All right. What's your next question? Okay, well, my question is very similar to this. Okay. Um, so mouth in the opening scene. Oh no, I where have his, a feeling you're where his character this. isn't really doing anything except for helping his dad. Mm-hmm. His dad, um was he even helping his dad? Was he like holding the flashlight or something? Turned on the water faucet. Turned on the water yeah. Or something. yeah, okay. So, anyways, he's so He's watching an old gangster movie mm-hmm. where the car chase and sirens and gunshots, which coincides with what's going on outside the window, right? Mm-hmm. What was the movie he was watching? Scarface. He, no. It's an old black and white movie. Well, there, there, no, Scarf, there is a Scarf that, there is an old black and white movie called Scarface. Oh, there is? Yeah, with James Cagney. Oh. Oh, then that actually, then, that, that was, that actually I just is, guessed. Okay, well, that's a good I guess. Guessed. Even though that's not what it is. All right. What uh, is it? Uh, Some Like It Hot. Oh, man. Yeah, I would not have guessed that. Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Yeah. That's an awesome movie. That's a movie you've got to see. Yeah, okay. You've I got, do got to see you that. You got it. Yeah. That's a All great right. movie. Man, one to one. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. My last question. What was the name of One-Eyed Willie's ship? The Inferno. Dang it. All right. I just did all the research on the model ship. Of I course know. I know what yeah, it is. Yeah, you probably did. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's wrap this up. How would you rank this movie? All right, on my uh, scale of movie mm-hmm. rankings, and, it, and it's based on my own personal opinions of the, right. of the film. of course. Okay, I come in at a solid, on a scale of one to 10. Mm-hmm. It comes in at uh, an eight. An eight? Wow. An eight. All right. I, I, I went slightly higher. Okay. I went, uh, I went a 9.5. Really? It's not a perfect movie. But man, is it good. Man, is it is it a movie that I have seen over and over and over, and I never get bored of watching it. It's not quite a movie I see every year, right? But it is a movie that, if it's on TV, it sucks me in. And like I said, everything about it is is close to being perfect. I think the only so. thing for me is that the, I just felt like the kids were just a little over the top, unrealistically yeah. over the top kind of obnoxious and, and like I think that's the only thing for me yeah. it just seemed, seemed like it's so just so I wonder little... I wonder because you were older when you saw this right I was younger I these kids were older to me yeah if I was younger when I saw this is a full on yeah cra- crazy amazing super so super I looked at movie. I looked up to these kids and be like I want to be like them yeah when I get older and yeah, you're just these like, are just annoying these kids these obnoxious they're like talking yeah. over each other they're yelling too loud they're Mm-hmm. So I went, yeah, nine. And that's about nine, it. Nine, four, it. nine, five yeah. for me. Yeah. So. All right. Everything else is just amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, this is this was a very fun movie to talk about. This was, again. So if you are wanting to watch the movie, I recommend, always recommend physical media, buying it for yourself, owning it. This is a movie that everyone should own. Whether you, if you don't, if you're a weirdo and you don't like this movie, Chances are someone in your family or a neighbor will like this movie and they will think more about you by having this movie in your collection. So you need the movie. You need a t-shirt. You need a movie. You need a t-shirt. Maybe a bumper sticker. A poster. Poster. Um, Yeah. You don't want people thinking that you're a, a moron for not liking no. this movie. No. So own the movie or stream it where you can stream it. But, uh, but there you go. So. All right, Jim, do you want to know what the next movie is? I'm going to give you a teaser. Give me a teaser. All I right. think I know what it is because I Here think we is. talked about it, but I don't remember I know, what it was. But let's just pretend you don't know. Okay. I don't, I have no idea. Okay. Here's a line from the movie that you're not going to guess. I'll never turn to the dark side. You have failed, Your Highness. I'm a Jedi, like my father before me. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> or is it Revenge of the Jedi? Oh, shoot. Well, we'll talk about that next week. All right. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. And uh, again, fun movie to talk about. For movies. For movies. That you 
Gotta sleep.